You had sent us an email. I guess we're on your email list. And so you don't send out emails too often. I think you do it kind of sparingly. Yeah. And you had an article in one of them that's the title was surround yourself with people who hold you to a higher standard than you hold yourself. And so we're kind of just that lends itself perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, what does that mean for you? Um, it means it's easy to be around a whole bunch of people that are miserable and, you know, uh, frustrated with their careers and so they will tend to be in their own stuff and so i i try to do my best to surround myself around people that are trying to better themselves that um, are doing the risky things that i want to be doing so that when i can when i'm feeling down i can call them and say for example i just had uh had breakfast with a, a writer producer a friend of mine who's on a tv show and I had sent him an email and it's so funny. He didn't even remember responding to the email. That was what, like, it's just his life is so busy and kind of things, but he responded. But I had said, so I have this pilot that I wrote. I got a ton of notes from people. I did those notes. I feel really good about it. Then I got notes from this one person and it's sort of a rewrite, like bigger rewrite. But I have in my process, I got this other idea and I'm thinking this other idea is better than this other pilot. So. Do I do this rewrite on the pilot or should I start working on the new show? And so he wrote back, oh man, how many times I've been in this position, finish rewriting the pilot, then go to the new story. And so it was that kind of thing. And then he had sent an email a couple of weeks later, hey, checking in, did you start working on the pilot? And he totally forgot, he checked in, he forgot that he had, I mean, he remembered after I told him, but it wasn't something like he was walking in. But um, so for me, trying to surround myself with people that hold themselves to a higher you know calling and higher you know sort of responsibility that helped me and so and that's how i am with my friends i'm you know i studied with milton katselis at beverly hills playhouse and one of the things he used to say when people were late to class he would say man you got horrible friends in this class to the person that walked in and usually usually the person like well, what do you mean it's like well if i'm your friend i would have like walked out you know before you got here and called you and said, where are you? Why aren't you here? Your friends aren't holding you accountable. They're not helping you. And so that was always something that like, you know, that I want to try to be. And he said, it's more difficult to do that with friends and you can potentially lose a friend because you're, you say, are you willing to lose a friend to help them and to help them be better? And I think that's what, you know, I try to be, I'm not perfect with it. There, I'm sure there's friends of mine that I should, I could push more or support more um and at the same time um you know i'm not doing everything i should be doing you know i'm not saying i'm perfect but i'm saying that how i can support and uplift some people around me um you know it's i think it's important i think it, i think it's just i think it's my default is not to take action my default is really to you know find what's wrong with what i'm doing and sort of just stay in this like hamster wheel of like it's not working i don't know what to do how do i figure it out and that's why what that wall like before i had all this project so i sit there and go trying to figure out how he was going to get the right person to read this script or you know take this meeting instead of just going okay i have this project now what are the actions i can take okay here's the emails of these five people done do these things great all right so I did that and then what else can I do today? Oh, I guess I'll go to the beach or I'll go have lunch or, you know, my wife and I will go do something. Or now it's like, oh, right. I have my hour and a half to do something. And then he's up and it's like, okay, you got him. No. Okay, great. I'll, I got him kind of thing. <laughs> well, let me just play the devil's advocate here because um, I think it's great that you have that desire to want to be around people that are going to hold you to a higher standard or maybe they're further along. But then there's this thing in LA where sometimes when people do achieve things, it's almost like a magnet and then people go away and they get kind of like left to their own devices because maybe they're not at the same level and they feel bad about themselves mm -hmm. and threatened. So I find that interesting that you want to surround yourself with either people that are gonna hold you accountable or maybe people that have maybe a few more credits or whatever mm -hmm. and you feel like that's beneficial because i don't know if everybody thinks that way and mm -hmm. i hate to take a negative turn with it no, but no, i no. think that's a very big thing in this town oh yeah i mean i feel like there's a there's a lot of people that you know don't want to, people to be successful that means they feel very 
um, limited. If I, I, that's my limit. I feel like it's limited to think that if you get something, that means that I that there's nothing left for me if you get that thing because there's just so many there's so, so many opportunities. There's enough work for everybody. There's enough for everybody. And so I think it's hard for people because you're fighting for you know even asking for help from somebody. I mean. It's hard to ask for somebody to go, oh, hey, can you introduce me to so-and-so that you know if I'm trying to get a project with that person? <laughs> yeah, and so that's it's true. A, it's a, that, that happens a lot. And so sometimes it's like, oh, yeah, that's an easy thing. And other times it's like, oh, I know you have a project that's very similar to mine. So I, in those situations, I would usually be honest and say, if it's something like that, I'll say, listen, I would love to, but right now I have this project that I'm trying to get to them. As soon as that's dead, I'm more than happy to sort of get that, but I can't. With all the other people that are involved in this project, I don't feel right to just do that. And then other times it's like, oh, the director that I know is trying to like get into this with this producer. I've already gone everywhere I can with this producer, you know, to network with them. If I can get this woman a job, why does it hurt me if she can get a job? So I do the introduction and, you know, it doesn't hurt me. And I find that the more I'm willing to um, help people, it always comes back. There's just, it just at whatever level, you know, um, I think that's the, I think it's, it's hard for me to understand when people ask for help and you can see that it's just so selfish and so self-centered that there's no, there's no give anywhere. There's no like, let me, you know, if you needed something, I would help you and be more like, you know, help me with this thing because I heard you know the thing compared to, well, yeah, I don't, you don't have anything to offer me, but I could still, you know, it's like, where's an exchange of or at least um, a thank you, of, of a real thank you instead of, you know, a whatever. Okay, cool. Thanks. You know, kind of thing. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's knowing it's knowing when someone's more of a taker and, and yeah. all that, and I get that. But I, I guess just I, I find that refreshing that you want to be around people that are going to hold you accountable or or that you can kind of aspire to or whatever, even yeah. though you've done so much already. But I think that's great because that sometimes that's not always the attitude, and it's not just that someone thinks that you've, you've taken a job for me. It's just they haven't gotten the job they wanted, right. and so it's too painful to be around someone that they perceive everything's going their way. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think that there's two things. I, ha I do have a group of friends that have sort of gone away while I've been progressing in my career. Now, my career is still not where I want it to be, but just there was, there was even a time when I got to do my first, direct my first feature. There were two people that like just were there in my life, but that I could see they pulled back. Like there was something about what they sort of, their decisions were sort of taking them a different road. They were the ones that were way more talented than me. I mean, both of them still are. Both of them are better directors, better writers. Like I think they're better, but they sort of get in their own way. And, you know, I found myself having to pull away because there was no sort of like the love wasn't, you know, like I wanted them to be as excited as I was for them when they had things happening and it wasn't. I was like, oh, that's interesting. And now, you know, this is, you know, about four years later and it's like, those guys are not in my life anymore. And it's tough. I mean, I tried, I keep trying. Then I was at one point, I was like, I'm the only one texting. <laughs> take the, take a look, yeah. what do you got? You know what I mean? And then I'd meet and then it's just like, oh uh, yeah, you know, and it's just like, oh, where's the, no excitement for what we're doing together, you know? Yeah. So it's tough. It's tough. I mean, it's business. I mean, it's brutal. Yeah, I, that's, I guess, what I was trying to say. It's not just brutal in going on auditions or pitching, whatever, but then the relationships around yeah. it. And that's something that I feel like people don't explore a lot. And, you know, I think yeah. it's, it's great that you, you put that in your, you. In your um, email.